Hey everyone, this is Steven Strawn at the Cast Iron Cookware channel where you can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. There is a proper way to restore cast iron cookware and there is an improper way. I've been noticing more and more on social media where people have been using grinders and wire wheels on cast iron cookware while restoring them. This is not the proper way to restore cast iron cookware and I'm going to go over that coming right up. Okay, today we're going to be talking about restoring cast iron cookware, the proper way to restore, and we're going to look at some of the ways that we want to avoid and stay away from. When I started collecting cast iron cookware, I didn't know anything about the restoration process. So I made some mistakes when I first began. So me being a kind of makeshift carpenter handyman guy, I had sanders, drills, grinding tools, and various size and shapes of wire wheels and grinding devices. Logically, I thought, hey, this is the way to go. Instead of just scrubbing, 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 why not get the power tools out and take care of business? Thankfully, I was able to learn fairly quickly because I sought help on Facebook as soon as I got started. So let me go over the reasons why using these processes are bad for cast iron cookware. Let's cover some of the processes of cleaning cast iron that are incorrect. Number one, when you use a wire wheel on a piece of cast iron, what you're doing, you're, you're taking off the rust and gunk. Yeah, that, of course, that's what you're doing. You're getting it down to bare metal. Once you get down to bare metal, you are actually making a change to the surface of the metal. Think of it like this, cast iron cookware is not porous per se because if it was porous you know it would it would leak but cast iron cookware has for lack of a better word porosity or surface porosity or you can say uh, inconsistent surface textures ever how you want to say it basically when you get down to a microscopic level cast iron cookware is rough people say that you heat up the cast iron, you get it hot enough before you actually apply the oil for seasoning, so the cast iron will get hot and the pores will open up. I don't think that's truly what happens. I think what happens is the cast iron gets hot. Now, metal does expand and contract with heat and cold, but I don't think it does enough shrinking and uh, expanding uh, to make a real difference when it comes to seasoning. I think what happens is it gets hot enough so when you pour the oil on it, the oil heats up and thins out to the point where on a molecular level, the oils can kind of get down in those little pores and crevices and inconsistencies in the surface. And then whenever you heat it to the point where it polymerizes, those little pieces that are down inside those little cracks and crevices have something to hang on to. So whenever you get your first layer of seasoning connected to it, each layer of polymerization is connecting to the last layer and you're building up a super slick, non-stick surface on your cast iron cookware. And that's what I love about it. You can go buy a piece of Teflon. After a while, that Teflon will wear down and you have to throw it away. Cast iron, you don't have to do that. If the seasoning breaks down, all that you have to do, wash it, put you another layer of oil on it, and season away. This stuff will last forever if we treat it well. Cast iron cookware is not indestructible. It is very durable, but not indestructible. And one of the ways that we can destroy cast iron cookware is using mechanical devices like sanders, wire wheels, bead blasters, sand blasters. All of those things can destroy the surface. And what happens is, once you get past the old seasoning and the rust, you're actually mashing down on a microscopic level because you're making it shiny and slick and you're making it non-stick. You can grind it and use a wire wheel to the point that you make it non-stick to the point where even your polymerization of your seasoning will not stick to it. 
Now, I want to say this. When you purchase an item, you bought it, it belongs to you. You can throw it in the trash, you can throw it in the scrap, you can do what you want to with it. But it's my opinion, if you have a piece of cast iron that belonged to your grandmother, you want to cherish it. A great example is this. Uh, you wouldn't take an heirloom shotgun that belonged to your great-great-grandfather and then take sandpaper and just sand that thing down. Even if it had a little rust on it, you want to take it to a professional and make sure that it is restored like it ought to be. The same way with cast iron cookware. The value of cast iron cookware is continually going up. The old cast iron is what we had and is what we got. And when you take a piece and you use mechanical means to restore it, it's no longer collectible. You can probably still use it, but it's not a collectible item anymore. Basically, it's a user and that's it. So Steve, what do I do? What is the proper way to restore cast iron cookware? Well, there are several means. The, the most common method now for collectors is using a lye bath and electrolysis. Now, everybody can't set up a lye bath and everybody can't set up an electrolysis tank. I understand that. Uh, that's too much involvement for one or two pieces of cast iron, but there are alternatives. What you can do, you can take spray oven cleaner. Get the yellow cap uh, oven cleaner, easy off oven cleaner. The main ingredient is lye. So basically it's kind of like a lye tank in a bag if you want to look at it like that. Get you on some goggles or some safety glasses. Wear some rubber gloves so you don't get it on your hands. But after you've got the safety equipment down, you've got the glasses, you've got the rubber gloves, and you got you a dishcloth with maybe a 50-50 vinegar solution soaked in it just in case you have an accident. You take your piece of cast iron, you spray it down really good inside and out with your oven cleaner, your easy off oven cleaner. You stick it inside your bag. A black plastic bag is better because if you lay it out in the sun, it'll draw the heat and it heats it up. Lye doesn't work so well when it's cold. You want to have lye at a warm temperature. Actually, the warmer the better. Now you don't want it hot, but you want it, you know, summertime weather hot. Now in the winter time, you, you're probably going to have to, to seal the bag up and put it in the garage or somewhere where you have a, a warmer environment. You don't want to put it out in freezing weather. It'll take forever for that lye to work. So you spray your, your piece down really, really good. Stick it in your black, doesn't have to be black. You can stick it in your plastic bag. What I like to do, once I get it in the bag, I'll just I'll open the bag and I'll spray it all over it again just to make sure I'm covered good. And then take and put a zip tie or a bread tie or something on the bag to make it airtight. Then you can if then you can lay it out in the sun. You don't want to leave it laying out on the ground because if you live in a community like I do, there's there's dogs and critters running around, you may lose a good piece of cast iron. I have dogs that will tow things off in my neighborhood. So put it up somewhere high, uh, put it on top of something, uh, make sure you have it where critters and children can't get a hold of it, uh, and let it set for a few days. Now if it's really cold, you're going to have to wait and let it set for a few warm days. Uh, you can also put it in a warm place, somewhere up high where kids won't get a hold of it. Uh, and let it set for a few days. You can let it set for a week. You can let it set for a year as far as that goes. The lye is not going to hurt the cast iron at all, but it's going to eat away little by little all of the organic material on the cast iron. Okay, once you've done that, you can take the piece out. You can go straight to the sink and wash it. You can use a 50-50 solution of vinegar water and you can put it in a spray bottle and spray the piece down. You can slide it out of the bag, spray it on the top, flip it over, spray it on the back. Then you can go wash it. The lye has been neutralized by the vinegar. Or you can just put it straight in the sink, but use gloves. You don't want to handle the lye too much because it will eat away organic. And by the way, we're organic. Once you get it out and you wash it, you can wash it with soap and water. Some people use Brillo pads. Me personally, I don't like to use Brillo pads because they are still metallic. I like to use a good scrubby that's made out of plastic 
or even the uh, plastic lodge scrapers. I'll use those. I'll go over that piece really well with soap and water, get it cleaned up really good, and then I'll look at it. If it still has organic material, uh, if you would like to, go ahead and spray it down again, stick it back in another bag and give it a few days. It's a lot better for the lye to work than to have to use all of the elbow grease and energy. If you can be patient and let it do its job. Patience is a virtue. So after all this is finalized, you get your piece out, you cleaned it up, all of the organic material is gone. You wash it in the sink, you use soap and water, you dry it really well with a towel, and once you have it dry, go ahead and coat it with some oil. That way you won't have flash rust. What usually I'll dry it, even before I put it in the oven, I'll go ahead and coat it with some oil, even though it's still kind of moist, just to make sure it's covered in oil so I don't get flash rust. I'll dry it again with a paper towel or some shop towel so I don't get lint stuck all over it. Once I get it dried really well, I'll stick it in the oven and just let it warm. Sometimes I'll just let it dry on its own. If I've got a good coating of oil on it, then it's not going to get flash rust. And saying all that, once you get it out of your bag and you still have rust, now you have another process that you can deal with. Rust cannot be removed by lye or oven cleaner or spray. Rust has to come off by a totally different method, not brushes or wire wheels. There's another way to do it. You can take that same uh, solution of 50% water, 50% vinegar. You can take that and you can uh, spray it on your cast iron and let it sit about 30 minutes. I wouldn't go any longer than that. On a previous video, I did mention you could put it in there for about an hour. Uh, if you're using full strength vinegar, it can pit your cast iron, so you don't want to go too long. I would say 30 minutes tops, or even if you put it in a 50-50 solution of uh, vinegar and water, you can submerge it, let it sit for 30 minutes, go back, take it out, wash it down with soap and water. If all the rust is gone, then dry it as well as you can with a towel, cover it with oil, and then you're ready to put it in the oven and let it uh, dry, or you can just let it dry on its own. But if you still have rust, stick it back in your vinegar bath for 15 to 30 minutes again. Pull it out, wash it, go through the process again. Really the only elbow grease you should have to do is washing. Once you wash it, you'll see if there's any pieces of rust left or organic material, then you go back and do it again. Uh, but you're not going to have to use any mechanical means. You're not going to have to sandblast. You're not going to have to use grinders or sanders. Those, those means of cleaning are just going to destroy your cast iron. And you want it to be good. You want it to look nice and you want it to be usable for years and generations to come. And when you get done, you can be proud that you've restored a piece of cast iron the correct way. Just going to touch on seasoning cast iron just a little bit. You heat up your cast iron to about 200 degrees. You pull it out of the oven, use oven mitts because it's going to be hot. Coat it with a layer of oil, whatever oil that you choose to use. You can use olive oil, you can use Crisco, you can use lard, people use bacon grease. My favorite is Buzzy Wax. But what you can do is you coat the piece of cast iron until it's completely coated with your seasoning oil, whatever whatever type of oil that you use. Then you go back with a towel, uh, preferably a non-lint towel, a shop towel of some kind, and you wipe every drop that you possibly can off. You're gonna wipe it away like you're trying to get it all off. Now you're not gonna get it all off because a lot of the oils are gonna be down inside the microscopic pores and crevices of your cast iron cookware, and you're not gonna be able to wipe that away. And that's what you want to leave. That will season. You'll put that back in the oven at whatever the temperature of the smoke point of the oil that you use. If you're using lard, look up the smoke point for lard. If you're using grapeseed oil, look up the smoke point for grapeseed oil. A lot of these oils have different uh, smoke points. One may be 300 degrees, one may be 400, 425, 
uh, 352. Just make sure that you go up about 10 degrees above the smoke point. If the smoke point is 455, go ahead and go up to 465 for one hour. Once it gets up to 455, start your clock and leave it in there for at least an hour. Cut your oven off, let it cool down by itself. Don't just get it out right then. Let it cool down where you can just reach in there with your bare hands and get it out. And you've got one layer of seasoning. You can go back and do that two, three, four, five, six times, depending on the type of oil and results that you get. Results may vary because cast iron has different properties. You can use two different pieces and you'll wind up with a, a different result. It's just it's hard to kind of gauge how many layers you'll need. But usually with Buzzy Wax, three to four layers is great. You can start cooking in it because every time you use it, you're going to be putting more layers on it. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and found it to be educational. If you have, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell and I promise I'll keep more of them coming. And thank you again for watching the Cast Iron Cookware channel.